the lowdown on some changes to the official rules of the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game that will go into effect on April 1st, 2020. Currently, the okay. rules require that any monster summoned from the extra deck must be summoned to an extra monster zone or your main monster zone that a link monster's link arrow is yeah, pointing to. Yeah, that's the rule before. This rule is being changed for fusion monsters, synchro monsters, and Xyz monsters. Starting April 1st, 2020, fusion monsters, synchro monsters, and Xyz monsters may be summoned to an extra monster zone or any of your main monster zone even without the aid of a Link Monsters Link Arrow. That's all we needed to air for this interview, guys. Okay, so let's get right into this market watch right there. This market watch is more for the 2020 April revision, Master Rule, call it what you want to call it. I will call it Master Rule 420. So if the World Chalice ditches your guys from Dark Neil Storm, I think it's a good option to play with Needle Fiber, maybe, or maybe not, maybe just in some combo deck in general, because they add a card that you can special summon another one. But if you don't play too much Link, maybe it's not for you, but there's still some deck that will play some Link, and maybe this card will be relevant to them. So maybe don't sleep on this card, guys. It could be relevant on the future. We never know. You just need one copy right now. Market price says $12.13. You can grab your copy pretty much about $13. And the page bottoms out towards $15. That's about for the same price for Unlimited and First Edition. So don't sleep, guys. That's the best I can do because if you sleep, the market will go up. Every card can go up at any moment right now. Everybody's excited with the new rules revision. A lot of deck will not be better, will just be the same. But there's some deck that will just push, push, push over. And you will see some new decks maybe or some older decks maybe appear in the top list for the tier. So after this market watch, we have a tier list. It's my tier list. I'm not the best at making tier lists. It's my first tier list. So please respect that. So the next card I think is Raid Raptor Four Strikes from Wind Raider Secret I think it's going to be going up maybe a little bit in price. Market price is $8.90. You can grab your copies for about $9 and the page bottoms out towards $10. Could not tell really why this card could go up in price, but I see this card in a lot of Winged Beast uh, deck. I think you detach one XYZ material from this card, add one level four Dark Winged Beast monster from your deck. Yeah, one level four Dark Winged Beast. So maybe that's the reason this card is good because it adds something from the deck. The next card that we all know that is going up in price because of Needle Fiber is Glow Up Bulb from Legendary Collection 5Ds. Every Glow Up Bulb I think is going up in price. Secret Rare market price of $12.31. Today you can grab your copies at $15.59. And the page bottoms out towards pretty much $30 for a Secret Rare. So it's still in buyout mode. Uh, I would get... I think I would grab the $15 one just to be sure because I think it's one of the best cards you can grab. And you still need two or three maybe if you really want to play with Needle Fiber and to have the correct build and to make a lot of plays with it. Needle Fiber is a very powerful card. So yeah, so it doesn't uh, surprise me if this card will go up in price. You also have Crystal, Wing, Synchro Dragon. Secret Rare uh, from Shining Victories. Market price says $3.60. This card, I think, negates an effect. Once per turn during either player's turn, when an opening monster is activated... No. Once per turn during either player's turn, when another monster effect is activated, you can negate the activation if you shoot... <coughs> you can negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that monster. Okay. I don't want to read more because the, the effect is very uh, loaded on this card. But just the fact that it negates something on the field, this will be played in some combo deck of some uh, gender or sort. Uh, you will see this card played in some dragon decks, maybe maybe in some plant synchro. I don't really know. Uh, for sure, don't sleep on this card. For right now, it's only about $5, right? Or $8. So if you can grab one for $5, I would consider picking up that at your local stall local store right now guys okay don't forget i think this is one of the best card of its era like this card was when it came out was so much played like everybody was making that on the field it was very annoying to get like out of this the only way you can do it now it's really kaiju and stuff now everybody thinks because there's more summoning and that means we need to more entrap to stop them 
Uh, people may think Maxi will come back. I think he can come back to one. So don't expect Maxi to come back to three or two just right off the bat like this. It will not happen. He will put it at one at first. So Maxi from Storm of Ragnarok, because it's a very powerful card, trust me. Market price is $22. You can grab your copies really played for that expensive price and if you want Nermit Unlimited it's $36.50 and the page bottoms out toward $52 so I think people are grabbing their copies because this, this card before was not that price at all uh, for a secret rare I think it was about $24 maximum the last time I was making market watches it's been a while guys I'm back I was being in depression guys so that's why I could not make some videos I was really sad uh, I was hearing some voices now I take medication so I'm better so I'm making more video I will make more video I will try to make market watch every day and try to make some yoga content guys because I know you on you like it and I just need to rebuild uh, my YouTube channel that's what I need to do okay so the next card is number 92 or earth dragon from cosmo blazer ghost rare yeah if you don't have enough money for the max rarity i'm showing just buy a lowest rarity if you can still just have the card in general this card is really broken in blue eyes something i don't really know team samurai x1 show the deck with that and i think it's really annoying that during your openings and phase the tetch one exquisite material from this card banish all cards that you open in normal summon or special or set this turn so you basically just wipe this field and next turn you just otk for game this card is exceptional uh, Nermint is 30 bucks. I think when people realize that this card is very good and could be played and maybe it will go up in price. Nermint first edition is $46. So don't sleep on this card. If you want a lower version, go for it. If you have enough money for the Ghost Rare, I would consider picking up the Ghost Rare. Now we have Bam and Shark, okay? This card, poof, just double in price. You can see from its market price, $11. I think this card was about $5 last time I checked on him. Right now it's $20 and the page bottoms are at $25. We all understand that Mermails right now really want to put uh, negation on the field plus uh, remove two cards from your hand. So this is more card for Mermail. But don't worry guys, there may be some more deck than Mermail that can use that that will just rise from the abyss like Eero and stuff. Maybe if, if they really want to sacrifice their combo just to make it extra negate, they can now. So yeah. They focus on their job, guys. Okay, the next card we need to talk about is Dante, Traveler of the Burning Abyss. If you think no one will play Burning Abyss, you're dumb. Everyone will try to play Burning Abyss because without those stupid rules, Burning Abyss was pretty good. The only lack in Burning Abyss, I think, is some removal for, uh, in form of shape. It's missing a little bit of removal when you play. It's not a bad deck. It floats and stuff. You get back a lot of cards, you can add some cards from the deck, pop some cards on the field, maybe banish a card on the field. It's not bad in general, but I think it's missing a few things in the deck just to make it like these days tender to keep up with the meta. It's a very good deck, but even with the revision, I think it will still be just a casual deck maybe. I don't say it will be a meta again, I don't really know. But there's a chance that could happen. There's always a guy that play well this deck that will win games and stuff. Uh, basically, they just they don't stall, but the deck is a little bit stally, and yeah, they just try to survive. So right now you can take your unlimited for thirteen dollar fifty, and if you want a first edition, it's going to be about twenty five dollars. So they're already going up in price. You can see another card that you should consider picking up are flute gates, guys. Big brain, big brain. Think about one deck that is the easiest to play, effortless to learn. You learn that deck in one week, you go to the local, you can top. Yeah, there's two choices, but if you said true Draco, you're right. Okay, so if you want to play a deck that plays Floodgate, like Sky Striker, true Draco, it's the time to do it in MR420, the rules revision. Why? Because Floodgates are absolutely powerful. There can be only one Ultra Rare. This card will be about $5 if everybody plays it. You have a choice to make. You play a really heavy combo deck or you play no combo at all, just Floodgates. Like you play True Draco, Altergeist, uh, Palazoic, I don't know. You play some decks like that or you choose to play like... Orcus Pendulum, I don't know what variant it could be, or just a 
a deck that just synchro summon all day or just all this yeah so i think there can be only one mystic mine goes and match and rivalry of the warlord a really good potential to be target of buyouts in the future just because maybe we're not we're not missing on those cards but i think they will go up in price like right now they're about one dollar what one two dollar each not even i think those cards can go to five dollar each easily because sorry for my ringtone that's my phone so i think they could easily reach five dollars if you counter the fact that if you don't want to play really meta you need to play like sorry you need to play something else that is not meta but it's, it's still good to top enough and the only deck that i see that is consistent to top enough with without masterpiece it's true draco i mean it's been a while since uh we've seen that kind of meta i think decks like monarchs could make an entry uh, monarchs with floodgates uh, could be a thing we never know i think a slower deck could be something this format just because the game is so fast that this will slow you down so much you will aid it i just hope they put Kaiser Colossum back to one just to balance the game a little bit because now everybody wants to play like very heavy combo plus like putting seven negates on the board uh, all much XYZ synchro they want. I think it's going to be crazy the first few weeks we play on the format. I think they will shape things up to just make it normal again. I think there's some cards that will get banned before the time comes like you will not know why it's banned but they will ban it before okay so that's all the four floodgates i have there's maybe more cards i could put in this market watch i don't want to make it too long for that so now we're gonna take a look at my tier list i think when we're gonna get into april there will be no tier zero decks no tier zero okay the best decks i think will be thunder dragon and sky striker let me explain why. Thunder Dragon now has more slots to do their thing. They don't need to really have links in their extra deck anymore. I think that will open uh, more option for them to build some other builds, like the build will be different maybe. And that will open some doors to some other combos, I think. And that will be interesting, but just Colossus is enough to uh, just slow down your, in your opponent enough. I think Colossus is like a flute gate in itself, so it's kind of a flute deck, flute gate deck. So if you want to make Tr Thunder Dragon more powerful, why not just play Colossus alone and just put some flute gates on the field and just laugh at your opponent because he cannot do anything and just like you cannot add, no, you cannot put another monster on board. I just attack you, I just attack you, I just attack you, and I think Sky Striker will rely on there can be only one to win every match and mystic mind and stuff like that maybe goes and maybe rivalry i think they will lose in power because they will get overpowered by a lot of deck and i think people don't under don't underestimate sky striker and thunder dragon i think they still be the best deck right now at tier two i put orcus because it's still plashable in every deck and dingersu is a winner in there xyz summon you just free a link zone you put Dinger in the corner, you activate his effect, pop a card on the field. You have some another zone you can put something if you want to put another link or something. So I think Orcus will be a sp pretty good engine for past 20 if they don't get uh, any card banned. I think if they ban Babel, you can still play Orcus anyway. I think if they put Galatea to 1, you can still play Orcus anyway. I think people just don't realize you don't need that much of our Arcus engine to be an Arcus deck. I think Arcus will just stay there for a while. I think a deck that has a chance to rise to tier 3 again, I think will be Cyber Dragon. I think it's one of the decks that will just have the most of this is Cyber Dragon. They mostly rely on Fusion and XYZ to make their day possible. Maybe they will get higher, I don't know. I put them there. I'm not really sure what they're gonna do. I think danger will still be a thing. I think there are a lot of decks that will include danger stuff. I think Pendulum has a chance to rise and become better because now they don't need to rely on all the other things to make 
all their plays. They just need to rely on Link Arrows to special summon from the extra deck. So on their first turn, they just can go crazy and don't think really about what they're going to do and just put a bunch of negates on the field. And that's what they're going to do. So I think this deck will be tier 3 about, about there. So keep an eye on Endymion, guys. I think it's very interesting. Yeah, I put True Draco in tier 3 because I think... With all of those decks, I think True Draco will just be the best contender to just shut your mouth when you try to win. You try to win with any other deck on the list, True Draco will just came out of nowhere and ruin your day for no reason. That's what I like about True Draco. It's one of the decks like, I don't really like. I don't really like True Draco because every time I play against it, I'm like, why do I lose? Like, I really try to not lose, but I still lose for some way. I don't know. Uh, it's just, I'm not mad or something. It's just, I think that's how it's going to go. For rogue decks, uh, I put Altergeist because I think Altergeist has a chance to rise again. I don't really know all the new cards, guys, that will come out on 420 and stuff. So don't uh, say in the comments, oh, your tier list is like shit. I, maybe it's shit, but it's my opinion. I think it will be mostly like that. I think Stun has a good uh, chance to make a comeback just because it will stop you completely for playing. Before the game was slow, now the game will be super fast. So if you stop them completely, like you just you can win a duel just by like, basically attacking them with Inspector Border, maybe. I also put Palazoic in a rogue deck because now they have a chance to maybe do more than one Pal uh, totally awesome per turn. I don't know if you can, but they could like they just go f slow at first in one turn. They just turn back on you and just put a lot of negates on field and stuff. I don't. The next deck, I think, should be in the Rogue. I think it's Mermel. I think they win from that. I think Mermel with Crystal Needle Fiber, they just gain an another card you can discard from your opening hand. So you just do Mulan Glacia, discard two cards from your opening, just uh, put a negate on the board, put or put an Abyss Dweller, and just say go and remove another card from your opening hand. You basically just remove three cards from your opening hand, like pretty much first turn. Like it's kind of annoying. I think that's why I like. I think their deck is rogue. It's just because it can snipe cards from your hand, like really easily. Like most of the time, most of the game, you can do it. So that's what I like. Now decent competitive deck. I think Grand Maju will be decent competitive. But I don't think it will be a rogue deck, or I don't think it will top as much as before. You have Burning Abyss. I think there's a chance that you see Burning Abyss topping. But at the same time, I think True Draco has more chance than Burning Abyss to top right now. You have Metal Che, you can see topping sometimes. But like I said, I still think True Draco has more chance than Metal Che right now. You have Invoke. Invoke is a good, pretty good choice. But I think... Uh, they will get overwhelmed like you have Crusadia that works really well with the link mechanic but yeah if nobody really wants to play link so maybe Crusadia will be good but we don't really know so maybe you will see some Crusadia but they're really easy to stop so maybe people don't really like that so yeah and I put Salaman great and decent competitive deck because I think they don't really win from that they just stay the same so I think there will be a decent competitive deck I think you will see them maybe top from time to time but I think that will be that's it. I think they will just shut down. After you have almost competitive, you have shuttle, ABC, DDD, Subterror. Maybe Subterror will be higher on the list. Maybe in rogue deck. Okay, Subterror is a rogue deck. Yes, don't worry. Okay, we have Dark Magician and Blue Eyes. Like almost competitive. Like yes, this deck can be very competitive past MR5, but. Are we looking at them as an engine or are we looking at them as like, like if you only play like the dragon engine, like I will not put like Dark Magician in the top, but maybe they will see sometime their Dark Magician and a Blue Eyes top. I think that will help. Good casual deck. You have Marin Cess, Necros, uh, Fright Fur, Monarch, I think. You have okay casual deck. You have like... Um, I don't remember this deck. Like you have Aero Mage and Trickstar, Cosmo and Meme deck. I think it's Exodia. Sorry guys. I think Exodia is my favorite meme deck. Like if there's a deck you can meme, I think. Exodia. Sorry, my camera was a little bit high today. Okay, thank you for watching my video. Sorry if it was a little bit long for the tier list. That's the first time I'm doing that. I hope you appreciate. Don't worry. See you next time.
don't forget, never give up on your dreams. One day your dreams will come true, okay? And guys, you're the best. You're the best.